In this video, we have a story about TATP, which is a dangerous explosive chemical. Do not make explosives unless you know it's safe, legal, and have professional training in the preparation of energetic materials. One person can threaten the lives of many people, and making explosives without taking appropriate precautions is irresponsible, dangerous, and disrespectful to the safety and well-being of others. Obviously, you shouldn't repeat any of the dangerous activities that you see people doing in compilations. So this story is about how someone made loads and loads of TATP. This isn't a recent story, but it's a recent comment from a YouTube video and the user reached out to me and they sent me some pictures of their crazy fiasco. So hopefully you enjoy. Yikes award submission. Back in 2010, I got my start in chemistry by illegally manufacturing high explosives in the basement. Yes, I got caught two years later for an unrelated reason. My first energetic was, of course, TATP. I know, it's a primary, and one should never make more than a gram or so of it, and looking back, I am still haunted by it. After blowing up a snowman with 40 grams of TATP, there wasn't any sound for this, so kabang! 12 years later, still the best exploding snowman on YouTube in my opinion, lol, I had my eyes set on a beaver hut, and decided to make a single batch of TATP, using half a gallon of 35%. I put it all in a steel pipe. How I didn't die pouring all that TATP into the pipe on a dry winter day is a mystery. I have a picture of all of the coffee filters full of glittering TATP sitting on the pool tail drying, next to the well casing pipe it went in. I'd post a picture here if I could. I never did find any trace of that pipe or beavers afterwards. And that wasn't the only yikes moment that I had with TATP either. Before that, different prep. I had mixed the chilled chemicals together, stirred in an ice bath for about 20 minutes, then put it in the refrigerator and foolishly went to town. Two hours later, I came home, opened the fridge, and found the jar at a rolling boil. I knew it was stable while wet, so with a racing heart and balls of steel, I carried it out to the yard and poured it out. Not every day do you see something boiling after being in a fridge for two hours, but one look at the picture of that pool table, covered in TATP, and yikes, becomes a serious understatement. So, if you've never heard of TATP before, it's extremely explosive. Even if someone made like a little dime bag full of it, I would be concerned. And so this person made tons of it. I shared this with the mods in the Discord, and they're like, dude, what the heck? So here we go. This is the pipe that they filled full of TATP. You can see that they could probably fit like at least a kilo in there, which is crazy. You can just barely see some of the TATP in this picture. There's a couple other pictures where you can see they've just made tons and tons of this stuff. Like, holy shit. It's crazy. This next picture looks like they're doing lines, except it's TATP, and those are like the biggest lines ever. What the heck? And so finally, we have one more picture showing that this isn't just one batch that they've spread two different ways. This is all one batch. This is all of the TATP that they made. So they didn't share their story with uh, how they ended up getting caught, but man alive, do not repeat this ever. I wouldn't recommend anyone makes TATP almost ever because this is so, so dangerous. This picture is the reason why we have to be careful about what people can share in the Discord. If someone is interested in more stories about my glue eating friend and me, here is a barely chemical related one. This story haunts me. I think about this story every day and I'm not sure why, but I think about this story every day. And you might be thinking, Joey, there's no way you think about this story every day. Just because it's so insane. When I was around 10, me and the connoisseur of the finest adhesives packed in twist tubes took a detour of our usual way home after school. He found a blister pack, these plastic sheets with cavities for tablets, and you press them through a metal foil to get them, filled with tablets. He showed me what he found, and without hesitation I said to him, I'll take one if you take one. Please no no no, big please no, please no, <laughs> please no. He agreed, and we both ate a pill from the blister pack that we just had found on the street. Luckily nothing happened. To this day, I have no idea what I took, but I believe it must have been some minor pain medication like paracetamol, because people don't carry around blister packs full of important medication, and nobody addicted to pills loses them. This was without a doubt the stupidest thing I've ever done in my entire life. TLDR, me and my glue-eating friend were popping pills like today's rapper at the tender age of 10. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> when I was in uni, we were working with chloroacetic acid. My stupid ass brain for no apparent reason after seeing the lab teacher talking about this white salt like powder and heard chloro something, acid something, and thought we were talking about sodium acetate. I took a plastic square tray and weighed the substance that was indeed chloroacetic acid. And if you've never worked with chloroacetic acid before, it's actually a solid, which was surprising the first time I came across it as well. I took it back to my place and said to my lab mate that I took the sodium acetate we needed. He who had a functioning brain noticed that I made a mistake and asked me to throw away the sodium acetate. And I simply ate the whole contents of the plastic tray because sodium acetate has a decent taste and I wanted to impress him with my braveness. 
Oh my gosh. The taste wasn't that bad, and at first I thought that I'd actually ate sodium acetate. After some minutes, my brain had a spark of intelligence, which is rare, and told me that the sodium acetate should be a basic dissociation salt, but the powder instead had a really acidic taste. Then I realized what just happened, and discovered on PubChem that chloracetic acid is really toxic, and actually deadly if enough of it is ingested. I induced myself to vomit, and spent the rest of the day with stomach cramps, but now I actually know how it tastes. If you wonder, it has a metal rusty acid taste, not recommended, 1 out of 10. Do not eat chloroacetic acid, please. This is a Christian Minecraft server. We do not eat chloroacetic acid in this server. I've smelled ozone before. I used to say that it smelled like something new. My dad used ozone to purify places and to kill bacteria and microbes in general. He was testing it on water. Incredibly, drinking ozonated water could heal throat aches. And I used to drink ozonated water to heal my throat when it was hurting. I don't drink it anymore because my dad doesn't have the machine to make ozone anymore. It looked like a miracle. You can put it in water and heal your throat. You could use it to kill microbes and even clean a pool, until one day, when my dad was purifying a whole 2 liter bottle of water, and I dared to put my nose on the top of the bottle and take a good smell of it. I can only say that I would probably die that day. I couldn't catch my breath. My head was becoming lighter, since I couldn't properly breathe. I couldn't get the ozone out of my lungs. The ozone, when I breathed it in, it burned my throat, and it was really horrible. I was trying to catch a breath of fresh air in the garden of my house, since it wouldn't have too much ozone gas there. My dad was doing the purification on a semi-closed place, but it didn't really work. Thankfully, after probably coughing a thousand times, I could breathe again. For sure, if I had taken a deeper breath, I would be in the hospital. This is a really terrible idea. There's been some other comments that I've debated putting into compilations in the past, and some of these include mouthwashes or uh, throat washes that contained potassium dichromate or phenol. And it just seems like people are like, yeah, you know, a sore throat's bad, but do you know what's even worse? The stuff that causes it. So let's just nuke your throat. Let's just do ozone or chlorine dioxide, like these crazy, crazy harsh chemicals. And in my mind, I think having a throat infection is probably better. I personally would prefer antibiotics prescribed by a doctor taken for a full course over something that could just kill you. You know, what's worse, death or maybe antibiotic resistant bacteria? In my mind, death seems worse. My pathophysiology teacher told us about when he was in his 20s and handling a soil sample without gloves. Ends up warning him about some chemical in it that could cause testicular cancer. Flash forward another 25 years, and now he has a kid known as the One Nut Wonder, since the other was removed from testicular cancer. He was a cancer researcher at the time, so he was probably able to identify it before it became a problem, but still a great example of when in doubt and when not to always wear PPE. This is a really awful story, and I feel really sorry for that kid. Maybe it was a random chance, maybe not. I'm surprised that if there was contamination in the soil that was that toxic that they hadn't been warned ahead of time definitely a concerning story my father did home chemistry in his youth he mainly made explosives because who does not like explosives once he made an improvised explosive device by mixing nitric acid and glycerol he put it in a container and used some cord as a fuse the problem was the thing did not go off so there he was in the middle of the forest and trying to decide if and how he should disarm the thing he was about to inspect it when it finally went off he estimates that it could have cost him a hand. This is why I don't mess around with explosives at all, because they're no joke. I do not even dare to make anything explosive whatsoever, because there's too many stories of things going wrong. Story from my grandfather. As a teenager, he and his hoodlum friends would steal bars of potassium from the high school lab. They would place the potassium on a small bottle of water, put the combination in a paper bag, and lay it on the streetcar tracks. Of course, it looked like innocuous trash, until the first wheel broke the bottle, and the second wheel arrived just in time for the big reaction which was just enough to knock the streetcar off the track. My grandfather eventually retired from teaching chemistry, many decades later. This is awful. This just sounds like your grandfather and his friends decided to try and just cause chaos by blowing up explosions underneath a streetcar. Uh, this is terrible. This is just, this is a bad story. I don't know how he became a chemistry teacher after doing that, but that is like awful. I, I don't think he could say it's just kids being reckless at that point. That is dangerous. In high school, we had a chemistry lab that was used once per year. Once, our teacher told us that years ago, they used it more because laws were less strict and had a lot of fun stuff. But then the law changed. The school didn't care, or they didn't have enough money for setting up a proper lab. So they were asked to dispose of all of the illegal stuff, but instead, my teacher and a friend of his chose to take care of all the chemicals, which included mercury and a lot of concentrated acids, by bringing them home with them. Again, this is another terrible story. Maybe this is okay in this case, but... The last time we had a story where somebody brought chemicals home, it was the iodomethane person that we talked about in a previous episode. Bringing chemicals home from work is probably not a good idea.
I originally recorded this video as a Patreon exclusive, but will be gradually releasing them on the channel as Extreme Compilations. These are the names of the people on Patreon who supported the channel during the month when this video was originally recorded. If you want to have your name at the end of a future Extreme Compilation, you can support the channel on Patreon using the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.